Hey guys, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Legends video. So for this video, we're taking a look at the previous four anniversaries, the first, second, and third anniversaries for DB Legends, and we're going to rank those. And we'll also take some community responses and see what some of you guys have as your ranking as well, as I did put out a community post and poll for that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about all this. We're doing this all before the fifth year anniversary. If you want to know who I think is coming to the fifth year and anniversary as characters, be sure to check out my video down below in the description. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing I want to say is huge shout out to Legends for making it to five years. Obviously, you never know how long these mobile games will last. But obviously, since Legends has the Dragon Ball IP, it's not the best game. It's not a bad game, I think, relative to a lot of the field. But it's not the best, obviously. Anyways, as it has the Dragon Ball IP, I think it can go as long as they want it to. Uh, it could go 10 years. It could go 12 years. Whatever they want, I think it'll go. It's not going to go ahead and get canceled due to lack of funding or anything like that. The game is itself already made over a billion dollars. Legends is wildly successful. That being said, here's to another year. All right, so the first year anniversary featured Goku and Vegeta. And I just want to say that we're going to have to talk about a lot of things. That inevitably, there are going to be things that we miss. But the first year anniversary is one that, in my mind, I, whether it's for nostalgia or other things, we're going to take a look at the amount of Chrono Crystals we got and all that stuff. So stay tuned. But for me, in my mind, the first anniversary is probably at the top of the list, right? I just think that when you go back to Legends way back then, uh, what is that, 2019? You go back to 2019, um, and we are having the Vegas event, and they just, the way that they revealed Super Vegito in that event, the producer, I don't know who it was, maybe it was Toshi, probably not, but a producer comes on stage, and they play, and they reveal, and he has the intro animation on stuff that played, and it just was like really, really crazy. I believe he had an intro animation which obviously is only an ultra exclusive thing but i think they did something i don't know i'm just misremembering but anyways seeing super vegeto there was so hype dude it was so ultra hype and then we get our first anniversary banners and it's these guys who were all highly care highly touted characters that we really wanted to have and see so this was awesome to see man it was basically like boo saga versus resurrection f stuff and uh this was when i i became mr prediction because this was my prediction was these two sagas and they kind of did their thing. That was pretty awesome. Anyway, moving on from here, um, we will go ahead and take a look at the second anniversary. And the second anniversary was a tad different. This was our first GT and uh, Future setup where we have the Future side and the GT side. And we also have one LF. Notice the trend here. There's only one LF, right? The second anniversary, the first anniversary didn't have like a part two where they dropped anything else, I don't believe. I think these were only the two banners they called it a day. Um, this banner had this this celebration excuse me had this banner and then the future one here and uh, I believe that also is mostly it aside from this and lol this <laughs> These things popped up later on <laughs> But Fuchito was the headliner for this anniversary. I believe this was our first anniversary uh, where we got raids introduced, right? And the raid, if I remember correctly, this raid had, it was done in like five minutes. Seriously, like maybe not five minutes, but it was done in like an hour. Uh, and that was like a huge deal. I guess that they didn't know how much health to give and how quickly the community would plow through them. Uh, so yeah, I believe that's like my one lasting memory if I'm getting it right from this raid from uh, this anniversary was the raid and stuff that might be third anniversary but i think it's second um time flies man time flies and when time flies it all kind of blurs together right so anyway yeah we had this stuff pop up and lol uh not them so much but lol this the third anniversary is where things get a little bit different we get two uh lfs i was gonna say ultras two lfs for the first time and we get vegeto or excuse me gogeta and uh zamasu here and this anniversary was okay in hindsight, I think, um, especially when we get to the first part of the fourth anniversary. But we go ahead and for the last, the latter half of this, we do get Gohan's release. And obviously, Revival Gohan was an insanely powerful character. Was well, he the first revive? I believe he was the first revive, right? And he, he introduces that mechanic for the anniversary. Uh, so awesome to see. And then we go ahead and take a look at the fourth year and LOL Vegeta. Uh, but we get Ultra Instinct Goku. And for the rest of that, we get, well, for the other part, we get this banner here. And I like these two characters a lot. And then we get uh, uh, Vegito, whose banner is not pulled up. And there, if there was another character after, forgive me. But regardless, one thing, I didn't really have much to say about the third anniversary. Because I think that that one's not really on my brain too much. But the fourth anniversary was so controversial 
controversial uh, for the first part of it because for their raids, for their content, they did something they had never done before. And it's it was so bad that for the next iteration, like for the second part, they completely did a back uh, a backpedal. If you remember, I was doing videos on it and I was like kind of like ranting, but not really, but kind of. And I was like, dude, why are they so stupid that they would do this? And they started locking the rewards from raids, right? And giving you a chance to get certain drops and stuff like that tied to having the characters and i haven't really looked at admittedly i haven't looked at uh the way that those are really being handled because i pretty much always have the character and i haven't really been doing videos on any of that content um so i believe that they left it completely in the dust uh but the way it was before is like you wouldn't get you you could run raids and not get anything like that that's how it was if you didn't have the new character and uh that was very controversial and they basically backpedaled and reverted it so before we get into the community responses, right? And for the record, if it wasn't clear, because I only talked about my first one, my ranking is basically the same as the overall poll results. First, third, uh, second, and fourth are kind of tied here. The, the thing is, second and fourth were both pretty bad. Um, and I, I don't want to let third off the hook because I'm just not remembering a lot of the third anniversary personally. Uh, but I do remember second and fourth being bad. But I also distinctly remember fourth anniversary being a lot better a lot better part two of the fourth was so different than part one and also one thing people also kind of complain about when it comes to all of these anniversaries every single one is lack of content because these characters drop and most of the time there's maybe one event and that's it there isn't anything for you to go to to save cc but the thing is is that throughout the course of the anniversary that's where things change throughout the course of the anniversary they drop chrono crystals and that segues us into our next part where we're going to take a look at the chrono crystal logs now huge shout out to uh, luigi i believe is the name over on reddit still doing these logs all these years in huge dedication and that's awesome to see you guys probably can't read this let me go oh, why is zooming in making it smaller <laughs> let's go ahead and just open the image see if that worked no okay. yeah there it is okay um so disclaimer for these logs for all of them is that as you can see they're predicated on the player base completing absolutely everything you see a condition in here at this time you know the space time duel uh pvp 2000 cc for top 10k uh down here at top 10k for 26 another 1000 for a total of 6200 story came out in the first clear for story again obviously this means you're completing all of the story missions right you're not leaving any of those cc on the side ultra space time rush had cc at this time um, and before it got revamped to have Zenkai stuff, there was some Legends Road stuff. So basically clearing everything is what this is all predicated on. But if you did complete everything, you were left with basically 22,000 CC. And this was, so you'll see later on as we get to some of these other ones. But this, I believe, is for the entirety of the anniversary. If he's watching this, he could correct me, of course. I believe this is for the entirety of the anniversary, number one. Um, but again, we only had two banners, I believe, in this anniversary, I believe, was pretty short overall. They didn't try to push it or milk it or anything like that. So as we go ahead and take a look at the next anniversary here, um, or for the next log. Uh, so this one is for anniversary number two, and this image is for May 2020. So quick disclaimer about the, the months. We have May, June, and July, where typically we're getting anniversary-based content. And as you see here, through the login bonus, we were doing a pre-anniversary login bonus. So that means that May had some anniversary stuff, but it also is like content that's not specifically in the anniversary period. You know what I'm saying? Like early May, like for example, right now, we're not technically an anniversary. We're in the pre-anniversary right now at the time of the recording. So that's kind of how May is. And you go back to early May, obviously you could have been saving CC for the entirety of May. And that's kind of how things look. However, there's not much going on here. This month uh, for anniversary to May had uh, 11,000 CC. But again, this is just probably a period where people are just saving CC. There's not really anything running, etc. But we go to June, which is when you really want to take a look at it because the anniversary starts in the literal last couple of days of May. Um, and they typically wait for a lot of the content for the following week's reset uh, after they put out the summon banners because that's just how they do. That's why I said that throughout the course of the anniversary, events do start popping up. 
Um, so for this, there's a, events and all that stuff. Very short log, though, for, for June 2020. 15,000 for June at, exclusively itself. And that includes things like the Shenron Wish and stuff like that. So I believe this anniversary was the first one where we got Shenron too, right? Second anniversary in June. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, which is going to be the total uh, CC records for the anniversary. And this is not additive. This is going to include some of what we just saw for a record just a second ago. And this total is at 25,000. So basically 25,000 CC for the second anniversary. Um, and I believe the number was like 21. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 22 uh, for the first anniversary. So you look at the amount of CC you're getting. It's a very good amount. And we're going to take a look now at the third year anniversary. So for May, same deal. It's at 16,000. Uh, and then June here, 27 for June of the third year anniversary. And then July is at 17. And again, remember I said May and July are there. Part of them is anniversary stuff. Part of them isn't right. They'll do the they'll do the pre anniversary. And then at the end in July, they'll do the thank you for three years. Right. Or thank you for four years celebration type deal. So anyway, throughout the mid, the middle, which is June, the main month, we had 27. So spike in CC here. We're going up consistently of a couple thousand CC basically every uh, anniversary. Now we take a look at the fourth year anniversary, and this is May 2022. Again, same deal. 18,000 for May, which is a huge difference than the last time we looked at a May specifically. 29,000 for June, 29.6. But again, I want to throw the disclaimer. You guys may not actually see 29,000 CC. You've got to complete every damn thing. Tournament of power. You got to get specific rankings in tournament of power. This is the absolute maximum available to you. And if we pull up the image here, um, it will show you the amounts that you can get if you're meeting certain criteria excluding pvp you are getting twenty five thousand instead of twenty nine thousand. so yeah be sure to play pvp uh, if you care about maxing or min maxing your, your chrono crystals uh excluding tournament of power you are losing another three thousand from tournament of power um so yeah so and also there's another thing that's stupid in the game i believe it's still here it was certainly here at this time um where if you uh, eclipse twenty thousand chrono crystals free to play you can't get any more um, that is a dumb restriction that they've put in this game since it launched. I don't know if that's still there. Let me know in the comments, but that's just a dumb cap. However, if you hit that cap, it will impact how much of this you're getting as well. So anyway, moving on. So yeah, nice to see 30,000 basically. Uh, and then July was at 20,000. So there was a lot of Chrono Crystals available uh, between May through July of last year. For the four-year anniversary there was a lot i'm sure there's some bleed through where some of this stuff is kind of like the same stuff but just raw numbers looks really really crazy that's like sixty thousand cc so a lot here uh just for the fourth year anniversary but it's actually pretty insane relative to the other years that we looked at um so yeah i i really do think that the fourth anniversary wound up being a really good one for the second half but unfortunately i think that the first part was so bad that i don't think that it could salvage for a lot of people the way that they felt about the anniversary and i think that number one the funny thing about anniversary one that nobody ever talks about is all of the things that i've talked about for all of the other anniversaries was relevant and present for the first anniversary like lack of content lack of chrono crystals lack of availability of characters until x number of days passes etc however the first anniversary gets multiple passes from a lot of people because like i said nostalgia for the record i have it as number one for me but nostalgia is a big deal especially if you were playing back then uh it's it's it was a really big deal uh, well i guess you wouldn't be you shouldn't be ranking it anyway if you, if you didn't play uh, anyway, and uh, also because it was our first one. It was the first time we saw it. Everybody was so hype about it, right? But in retrospect, I don't really think that the first anniversary did much of anything crazy. Um, pretty run-of-the-mill standard stuff. And, you know, the thing about anniversaries is that we are where we are now because of the trend of previous anniversaries. So we'll see what happens with the fifth one. But if we're dissatisfied with the fifth one, it's because of one through four being lackluster. And the last part about this note is that Legends Festival is the real anniversary for this game. This is just celebrating the date that the game came out. And, and which, by the way... 
uh, whatever the anniversary day is, May May twenty seven or whatever. That's not the actual day that came out. The gate, the day that the game came out. I remember prior to the first anniversary, they did a reveals and stuff, I believe, uh, or something like that. And Toshi was on the video saying, "Oh yeah, we didn't know exactly what day we wanted to do because there was a number of different date possibilities because of the soft launch and this and that. <laughs> so we just picked the day out of a hat type deal. So that's kind of funny a little knowledge you guys probably don't know." Um, but it was somewhere in that range. All right, one was so good. The reveal in Vegas, uh, the introduction of those cool little story events, the characters, Super Vegeta, and, of course, the banner format. Um, yeah, the little stories are cool. So I believe what he's talking about is when you log in during the anniversary, they have the little pop-ups, and they walk you through a little story, right? Like, for example, I remember, like, the second anniversary one was really, really cool, where, like, Zamasu was just, like, harassing you, and then there's a Vegito pops in, and he saves you, I believe is what it was. You know how when the new characters pop out, they do the new character in Legends, and they play their character preview and all that stuff then they show you the image of the banner right um i didn't talk much about banner format i only recapped the characters that came out uh but banner format was very 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 different for good and bad reasons first and foremost the number of sparkings was high as hell compared to where it is now um but i wonder if you were to if you were to mi mix and match right all the banners like these two and whatever else we got and mix and match them into one i imagine that the the the, the same i don't the same number of characters is almost relevant right because the first anniversary had five characters per banner well i guess really four right uh yeah four because super vegito is on both but you get my point um super vegito and four other characters the second anniversary again doing something very similar here this was when the heroes came out so there's a there's a padded number we're gonna just exclude the heroes but same deal here uh we got five characters including vegito blue same thing on this banner here another five characters including vegito blue but then we get to the third anniversary i believe is when they and then also they were doing this stuff too right so more characters so yeah there was a lot more characters popping up the banner format was very 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 different and very favorable back then so i don't want to take anything away from it especially legends festivals too i mean legends festivals were insane amount of characters but anything like pre covid kind of was really really good um this was actually i think that the second anniversary was kind of saved because this second anniversary popped up in like the heat of that i think it was saved though because they already had a lot of these characters going and they probably went all out for that anniversary right because maybe some uncertainties on the back end third anniversary though they kind of are still doing the same thing but i just thought that the character quality wasn't good enough people say funny stuff like oh this character is an anniversary material but bro ice and nova are what <laughs> you know i said nova really uh anyway moving on five characters here and we see another third banner here and then we come here four characters including the lf so one character missing but we get two banners at the same time so banner format isn't crazy different but i think that what what really happens with the banner stuff is just the incentives as well i don't know there was a step up banner for the first year anniversaries, I believe, and these aren't the step up versions of them. These are just the regular versions. Uh, yeah, they started. In, yeah, these ones started on June 9th. These are just the regular versions, not the step up versions. But I guess we'd have to see what the step up incentives look like as well. I think back then you were still resetting what back to step one, but maybe it was better. I don't know. Um, so year one was definitely the best. The format was probably my favorite of them all. All the new characters made an impact on the meta in some way. All of them except for Buhan because he got gate kept by Super Vegito. Uh, the free red Vegito was solid. Um, yeah, I didn't. Okay, so that's another thing too. It's kind of hard to go back and talk about all of these anniversaries and try to make the video concise. But the, again, within the content, there are characters that release and stuff like that. For example, free red Vegito was really, really strong. We don't have those events anymore where they do those like 100 stage events anymore where you consistently go up. But it was nice to see that character uh, come out. And I believe uh, for the second anniversary, we did the second anniversary have the free Broly. I think that's when he came out. Maybe he came out a little prior. Um, anyway, but yeah, there were some characters that dropped in between as well. Uh, year three found some hype units. A second free Ultra Vegeta came out. Uh, wow, is Ultra Vegeta from the third anniversary? Is he that damn old? I mean, there was an image of him in one of those CC logs now that I think about it. Wow, Ultra Vegeta, Ultra Vegeta is a really old character. 
Um, year two would be higher, but I think the impact of Ajito Blue put a bit of a snooze on PvP and created the environment of one dominant team. I know it was an issue before, but VB put uh, an emphasis on it. Year four felt lackluster. I didn't care for how drawn out it was. One month is enough. You don't need two. I don't mind releasing the three banners at the separate times. I just don't have... Okay, so that's another thing, too. Uh, he makes some valid points. Um, again, I don't want to just throw year one in, under the bus and say it's like nostalgia, but I do think that a lot of that is still true. But he does have a good point with the way that the, the banners were designed. Again, I don't really understand fully the incentives right now. I'd have to go in and look at it. But yeah, I'm sure that there was some good perks and the banner format was nice. I remember being happy about it. Um, year three, I don't have much to say. He doesn't have much to say either. Year two, so Vegito Blue did Vegito. So it was like he said, it was already a thing uh, with with the way that the game was where there was. A, so all the way back, this is a separate discussion. If you go, if you talk about metas in this game, the sad truth is that there was there's always been maybe three teams at max in the meta. Right. Um, and that doesn't mean that you'd see those same three teams. Maybe you only see two of those teams, but there's a third one that's like an anti-meta option that's still really solid. The sad truth is that that's always been the case, right? All the way back to since we've been able to form cohesive teams, right? And that's just always been true, right? Going back to the year one anniversary, prior to that, it was it was hybrids. It was LF Gohan. It was LF Goten. It was those characters, and they were dominating the game. And Super Vegito pops in, and he's dominating the game. By the way, Super Vegito put a strangle on the game, too. Like I said, he completely gatekept Buhan from being good, which Buhan was really good, but he couldn't get ran because Super Vegito was in every game. The same thing happens in the second anniversary with Omega Shenron and Vegito Blue for the record. Um, but Regen was so, so powerful, but it was uh, unable to really run it effectively because Super Vegito also had anti-Regen. He would just destroy your team. Um, so, yeah, it was there. But Vegito Blue really did. Vegito Blue is the poster child of him and a couple other characters like purple broly when he first came out but again i want to move past the meta topic but vegeta blue is the poster child of just destroying game balance right because he was so powerful year four so this is a trend that i kind of mentioned and the reason why year four is kind of the way it is is because they really drew it out year four was like uh, it was it was like damn near three months i feel like if I were to look at the dates, I feel like year four was probably like two and a half months, which is a really long time. The fourth anniversary is last I heard is still going strong. That's how long that anniversary is. Uh, so I hope they don't do the same thing again, right? I think that they could just get by with two parts and call it a day. I think that they really could. First year was the best. Uh, started with an awesome reveal. See, see how keep, people keep saying the reveal? The Vegas thing was a, was a real, like that got them so many brownie points. Uh, the banners were great, as it was the main characters on both banners, so it didn't matter which character, which banner you wanted to go for first. Uh, it all depends on your personal taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think he means Super Vegito is on either banner, which is true. That's something that they left behind in the third anniversary, right? They, the last thing they did that was on the second one, where it was Vegito Blue on both, but they move on and start having two Ultras, and that completely gets past that system. Uh, year one was so good, the hype reveal. <laughs> I told you. It was so cool. The introduction, everything was 10 out of 10. It was so amazing. But this is what I'm saying when I say year one, like, as nostalgia, because that's just a, re that's just a freaking reveal. We can talk about the other reveals. Now, the other reveals don't compare to the, the level of hype for that first one. But there was some other damn good reveals. But for example, if you're a subscriber, this is the don't pause the stream reveal, right? I probably single-handedly created the biggest meme for this anniversary. Like things like that right the other ones had some awesome reveals too they don't compare but i mean that's not really the anniversary though that's a reveal of the anniversary <laughs> year one the best by far in emphasis the introduction of the blues and super vegito uh at the vegas tournament was so hot oh yeah that's right it was super vegito and goku and vegeta with him too huh but again another reveal comment <laughs> year one no doubt the way it all was done was epic the vegas tournament the reveal free base vegito uh the way the banner was handled did not feel the same way even after the insane luck i had the following years yeah yeah, yeah. the so like i think that they, they really did everything really well that year that's why i said it's it's actually at the top of my list but i tried to be as fair as i could but we're gonna see reveal brought up a lot 
Uh, the first year anniversary will always hold a special place in my heart because I am a day one player and I've waited for Vegito the most and SSGS is my favorite transformation from Dragon Ball Super and seeing both of them revealed in the first time at the showdown, the way it was revealed was so awesome. Yep, I remember freaking out in excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh, that's right, too. It was like the match was loading and Super Vegito pops up and it's like, oh, what? That's a thing? Okay. Because we thought he was going to just pop in with some regular characters, not the new characters we don't even have yet. Uh, third. So somebody advocating for third year. What? Third year, we had two LFs that looked amazing and they both came with two great sparkings that could be used alongside them. And the rewards we got and new features added in that year were pretty good, too. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Second year was too good. Uh, so much to do and VB was fun as hell. Definitely the best. Okay. I don't I don't have any comments. It's, it's up to you guys. Okay. So one is probably the best for me personally, but I love the second. Vegito Blue is among my favorite characters released in Legends and is quite enjoy the you know who came with him. He came with some cool characters. Okay. What I saw twice in a row now was, was second year anniversary hype from two people. And it's coming, I think, from the perspective of playing as Vegito Blue. You know what I remember is even having Vegito Blue. I thought that the game was very unfun to play personally right then. I, I don't really have any comments on the, the content alongside it. I only briefly talked about, like, the raids and stuff again because I can't really. I have to go back and do a ton of research, and this video would be, like, an hour long. Um, but uh, uh, in terms of, like, my, my lasting memory was... Uh, Vegito, oh, you know one thing I'll say is I've said it a lot in videos. Vegito got all the hate, but Kefla got to skate under the radar. Kefla was as bad, if not worse, than Vegito Blue to play against because the element she, the element she created was like, was was as bad. It really was. Um, that's why I, li I literally just said, and he still gets it from me too. I literally just said Vegito Blue was the, the the poster boy for bad game balance because it's true. But Green Kefla was no exception. She was right there with him. So when you put them both on the on the team together, my lasting memory from that anniversary was being able to put my phone down for. 20 30 seconds at a time and not being able to do anything especially because back then if they, if you cover changed once you were done it didn't matter how long their combo was if they never dropped the combo which spoiler they weren't going to because kefla and vegeto were so good it didn't matter if you missed your cover change you didn't get the right one maybe you have a strike knockback they did a blast character blah 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 you're done put your phone down just put your phone down. You don't get to play the game. Anymore. You literally couldn't play the game anymore. You can play it now. You can switch as many times as available to you. But yeah, that's my lasting memory from the second anniversary. Third anniversary was the best for me because of Monkey Gogeta and a lot of uh, events that made me enjoy it so much. So yeah, so also that's what I was going to say. For the last two comments and then the third anniversary one, it's a lot of uh, favoritism for the main character. That's fair. That's so, And there was some of that with the first anniversary too up there. That's fair too. Uh, obviously, this is why I asked because people are going to have different opinions. I don't have... I don't, I don't think I have a favorite character among this bunch. My favorite character is probably Gohan, right? Well, it is Gohan. He's my favorite character out of all these characters, personally. In terms of the character himself, not not the character in Legends. Um, I really like this Goku and Tapion, too. I don't... But, like, that doesn't really... Like, a Vegito fanboy was eating real good for the first couple of anniversaries, right? Like, that's not really something that moves me personally. Um... I'll definitely say that year one was the best in terms of hype. I know that VB was hype, but everything that went on during the year one was so good. The Vegas, the showing of the units. Yeah, like I said, it, you know what it is, is, and I don't want to, again, I, I mean, what I said was true. That's pre-anniversary. That's not the anniversary itself. That's just a preview for the anniversary character. They'll never be able to capture that moment again. It was the perfect time and place. It was the ultimate culmination of hype. The first anniversary as well. Be, it, the first anniversary is always going to be, uh, no matter what, held in high regard because it's literally the first. No other reason other than it's the first, right? Um, they, they'll never be able to capture that again. They can do the exact same thing again, and it would it would be hype, but it wouldn't be the first. No matter what, nothing they ever do to reveal a character will be as good. It doesn't matter what they do. They could pop in and give you okay. Maybe they could. Maybe if they popped in and personally like delivered a thousand dollars. You think you think differently, right? <laughs> but seriously, um, so that's that's what I said. Like it set the bar so high to where people remember it, and that was a very memorable thing. It almost doesn't really matter what else happened in the anniversary itself because the reveal is so damn memorable. 
uh, one or two were fire, so many new units. I did like the number of units that came out for the second anniversary, and I really liked that even though Vegito Blue put a stranglehold on the anniversary, all the characters except for these GT ones, all the other characters except for these two too, all the, the Dragon Ball Super characters were usable, right? Goku was the least usable for the record, but all of them were usable. And I like that Goku a lot. I think one, I think just laid the foundation of a good anniversary. Vegito as the star of it being really good, but not dominant like VB was, uh, I think played a massive part in that. No, Vegito Blue was, Vegito was exceptionally dominant. He single-handedly shut down the best character in the game. But I, I think that he's not Vegito Blue dominant, but also Vegito Blue was Vegito Blue dominant because Kefla also was on a team, like I just said. But he, I, I don't want to romanticize the characters because Super Vegito shut down the best team in the game and Gate kept another team. Gohan was predicated. LF Gohan was the best character in the game. He was riddled through the Vegas showdown. He was predicated on getting his buffs and Vegito literally comes out with a new mechanic to cancel buffs. I don't want to romanticize, but Vegito Blue, or excuse me, Super Vegito did, he, he, he get kept the game. Right? He get kept the game. Uh, and there were other characters in there that did this more than him that released, like, like again, Purple Broly. But I don't want to act like he didn't. Not as much as Vegito Blue, though. Uh, and it wasn't the other banners. Uh, banning units were bad. The opposite, in fact. Blue Goku, Blue Vegeta, Golden Frieza, and Buhan were all insane in their own rights. They were all really good. I remember that Golden Frieza being super duper good too. And he was like the only green you could actually kind of use. And that was because he wasn't regen. Again, I want to make this very clear. Buhan was very good. And if you used him, you probably had a lot of fun with him. I remember that too. But the reality is, is that his entire team would just get crapped on by Vegito. Because Vegito also had anti-regen, right? And he also had type advantage. Which is why I said also, a lot of that extends here. Goku had type advantage versus Vegito. And he could rip Vegito to pieces, but so what? That's just type advantage, right? That's that that means that every character can do that. But it's really relevant when you drop a character that was really good in Omega Shenron. He was super good for his time, but he can't get play because Vegito Blue is in every single match, right? So if you used Goku, you could get by Vegito Blue a little bit, but the team just wasn't comparable and as a whole, right? So there's just a lot of factors that go into it. But the blues, the Super Saiyan blues from the first anniversary were really good. These guys were really good. It was nice to see them pop in and do what they could do. They were really good, especially that Vegeta. Uh, and then Goku just didn't die. All right. Uh, my first time playing DBL was during the second anniversary. It was my favorite because Vegeta Blue broke the internet with how good he was. See, that's why I said also a moment ago, some people are really, some people really liked the brokenness of Vegeta Blue, which is fair. Year one has been unmatched. Best reveal. Another reveal comment. All the characters uh, we got weren't mega breaking, but still fun to play. And the game itself was just in a really good place at the time. <laughs> comment here saying Super Vegito was busted on release. That's what I've been trying to make as a, as a point for the whole video. Uh, I mean, in comparison to now, where every character that comes out shifts the meta completely, Super Vegito was crazy on release, but balanced enough to where every time you saw him, you had a mental breakdown. Are you agreeing or disagreeing with me? Because it sounds like agreeing. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just wrap this this course up uh, for the final little thing. Releasing Super Vegito in that climate of the game is no different than releasing an Ultra in our current climate. That's how equal. Uh, that's the equivalent. That's how good he was. Same applies to Vegito Blue. Oh man, I totally forgot to mention this. I only looked at these banners. As what they were, but I haven't since nobody's brought it up. Brought it up. I'm just now realizing that I haven't brought it up. But the character quality for the third anniversary was really bad. It was really bad. Gogeta was like, there was a lot of discourse and talk online about Gogeta being underwhelming and terrible, which you just don't want to see from an anniversary headliner, especially the anniversary headliner coming off of Vegito Blue. And I'm pretty positive the reason why people felt that way and why the devs, or is because the devs felt like they needed to hold back here because they didn't want a second Vegito Blue. That is why this happened, right? So yeah, Gogeta, like he could be a good wall. I thought that he had good stuff in his kit and he had all the neutrality and he had some stuff in his kit, but he did no damage, things like that. 
they really held back here. Um, I haven't talked about character quality because no one's brought it up. Uh, so, yeah. Year one, because of how long I asked for blue and they finally came in the game. Uh, and when those reveals were happy, okay. Also, the what if situation when they fought two Vegitos was incredible. Yeah, that's, that's more talk about the little uh, the little story that plays when the anniversary starts. One is the best just because there were so many new things to experience for the first time. See, that's what I brought up. This is why I mentioned the a few things in the video is it's literally the first anniversary so you experience all these things for the first time so when they run them again even if it's even if it's better right even if it's better later it almost doesn't compare to the first time uh second annie for sure had the best week with my cousin and we played and grinded the hell out of the game oh that's a cool personal one and we both got vegeta blue nice I'll give props to year one, but when year two dropped, it changed the power scale uh, dramatically and dropped one of the best LFs. Granted, they did his Zenkai dirty. He still can keep up with today's threats with his capabilities. I, I think I'm going to go back and revisit a few of these characters. Let me know if you guys want to see that. I did it last year where I revisited the uh, anniversary characters. I might go back and do that again. Maybe not all of them, but yeah. We're going to read a few more. Sorry if I can't get to all these. I'm going to just randomly scroll. Sorry if you were next. Uh, and we'll go from there. But... Personally, I don't think any anniversary comes close to topping the first from the reveal. Uh, the amount of characters we got with different tags. Okay. I didn't really like any of the anniversaries too much, but Legends Fest 2021 was peak in my opinion. What was 2021? Was that was that the tag Goku Vegeta one? Because 2020 was Ultra Instinct and Jiren, right? Yeah. Year one was just a different feeling, I guess, because it was the first time they did it, LOL. Exactly like I mentioned, but I had tons of fun playing. Awesome, man. Pulled the units with no hassle. Anniversary three was my first, and I feel like it was less predatory than anniversary four. Yeah, it was. Anniversary four, this is why I mentioned earlier, the fourth anniversary part one was extremely predatory. I was doing videos on it. They, they literally said either summon and own these characters or just don't play. They literally said that. Uh, that's all I know of them. Unfortunately, character reveals aren't as exciting as they once were. That is also true. Um, I think when it, when you get to the point where you have so many of them, it just it's just watered down now. Uh, third year, two separate banners to summon on, and they put uh, in my favorite OST. Nice. Because Legends actually let the players create the meta, and they just focused on making good units that actually had a lifespan past two months. This looks like it's a two-parter comment. I don't know which one he's talking about, unfortunately. Uh, yep. The second anniversary was better for the simple fact that Vegito was not outshone by other units in his celebration. Do you guys think Vegito, this Vegito, was outshone by these blues? I remember using the blues, but I don't remember them being better than Super Vegito. And I don't, I, I think, okay, if that's the sentiment, I think it's because they're on the team together. It's almost like a 2v1 thing, right? Because Vegito's team was super watered down back then. That's why he and the free Vegito came out with those insane Z abilities at 14 star anyway for this uh, LF one. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have any comment on that. I'll leave that to you guys. I started second anniversary, but I have to say that all anniversary are pretty mid. They all have hype, but something was off. IDK about first anniversary. I wasn't here. I hope fifth will be good. Yeah, there again, Legends Festival is the real anniversary. Uh, I had to start the game during year one, so I can't talk on it. Uh, year three is the best one I've gotten to experience. That's fair. Year one will always solo. A reveal was a banger and Super Vegito is just it. Year three will probably be next for Gogeta. Uh, see, this is kind of Gogeta himself favoritism, which I'm cool with. I don't mind people liking characters, but this I just said he wasn't very good. And the discourse around him was that he wasn't very good. Uh, I loved how broken he was. And, oh, the funny thing is the next comment is for Gogeta 4. I loved how broken he was. So this person thinks that he was he was broken. That I'm sure that there's a lot of people that do. That, but I think that I think it's pretty obvious that he wasn't when they turned around and gave him an equip instantly. Not instantly, but he got his equip really fast. When there are a lot of characters that could have got that that are still in line to this day that are older than him. I think that that tells you what they what the community thought of him because they turned around and gave him an equip instantly. Um, again, not instantly, but really close. 
Gear 1 was the best. Super Vegito was amazing. And we got a free unit that was actually really busted. Yeah, a lot of people are really, really uh, high on the red Vegito, which is fair. Really, really, really good character back then. Uh, and he just got a, a Zenkai, what, like six months ago, something like that? Maybe last anniversary? Uh, I say year one, because I'm not mistaken, Vegito was shown off during the fight for the winner, correct? There was literally the coolest reveal to date outside of Tag Blue Boys. Oh yeah, the Tag Super Saiyan, they're not in this video, they're not a topic point in this video, but the Tag Super Saiyan Blue, the Tag mechanic was a really good reveal. That's why I said we could talk about other reveals if reveal is the, is the main thing people want to mention. Um, there have been some really good ones. Year two was the biggest game changer. You didn't mention in what way though. Uh, third is on top. Ooh, okay. I like. I don't really have many thoughts on the third anniversary. I just don't. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> I started around the second anniversary, so IDK about one, but three was hype. Uh, was unmatched to me at least. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't really comment on that. I'm really hoping this year tops year one, but if the format's similar to last year's, it's already a dud. But if the format is similar to last year, it's already done. So two things they don't want, they can't do from last year. They can't extend it out three months almost or whatever it was, two, two months and some change. Uh, and they can't do the part one four year anniversary garbage that they did. I don't think they will do that again, but they, they, they probably will extend this. If you notice, they've been extending a lot of campaigns and they're like putting them in like two and a half month segments or two month segments where they're doing that and they're giving them a couple characters and it's allowing them to pad out time. This year I looked at the things and I'm like, dude, we're already in, in June basically. And we've only really had like a couple of tags really get celebrated this year because we've been in like the last two months, been in a Majin Buu saga for whatever reason, like, you know, they've been kind of padding stuff out, which means that for the record, the game is kind of in maintenance mode uh and what not not itself means like you know what i'm talking about if you know anything about mobile games this game is in a in the state where they're just trying to keep it up they're not really and it's been here for a while it's already been a success they're not really putting they're putting work into it they're putting new features and stuff but they're they're taking their sweet time it's kind of what it is you know uh, the game is mainly focused on just maintaining the status quo which i mean that's that's normal that's normal Year four, all the resources we got was bonkers. Banner format was hot garbage. I'd rather third at that point, but all the CC plus LFZ power was a redeeming factor. So I talked about the CC in the beginning, but year four was the, the best. And year four showered you with energy and erasers. Like it gave a lot of resources. So like year four should be higher on the list for people. But I think that year four part one was so bad that it just left a terrible taste in people's mouths. So... I'm going to read this one here because there's a lot of comments on it. And this will be our last one. Again, sorry if I skipped over any. For me, it's year three. Year three introduced us dual LF banners for celebrations. Frieza and Piccolo did, but G4 and CMZ were hype. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, they introduced that with two side units. And it was pretty great in terms of characters. The anniversary didn't feel dry. Raids were great and other stuff, too. Plus, the anniversary story was much better than mostly all anniversary. Uh, I didn't like the first one because I got no new SP. Uh, so he didn't summon the new characters on the first anniversary. Okay. Like not even Buhan or the Blue Boys. So yeah, third was the best anniversary. And 2021 Legends Festival was the best celebration ever. Uh, it was like Legends peak year. So he's saying that that year, 2021, with the anniversary and Legends Festival was the best one of Legends. That's a whole different uh, discussion. But it, I mean, it could be. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's read the replies. Most goofy answer I have ever seen. Bro's ranking off of if he pulled in a unit or not. They had the same thing in first anniversary except for raids, and there was more events in the first. I don't know about the events thing because we went through the CC log, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, I didn't like the first because I got nothing, and that was there wasn't a dual LF banner, uh, nor were there. So like, I didn't really know if people really liked the dual LF thing. So do you guys like that? I mean, to me, I. I, I kind of like the character being on both personally, but let me know. First anniversary wasn't even that memorable to me. Super Vegito isn't even half more hype than Gogeta 4 and uh, Corrupted Zamasu for me. So yeah, there's some character favoritism. He's saying that he doesn't really care for Super Vegito. That's fair. Uh, just my opinion. Okay. The events in CC amount was unmatched for, he's saying facts. I guess he's agreeing with the year three. 2020 was pretty damn great year for legends. Uh, why are you basing how good the anniversary is based on how many characters you got by that logic? First anniversary was, was the worst purely because I didn't get Vegito. 
Don't even pretend that both G4 and CMZ sucked and part two had one of the most cancer matters ever. Yeah, part two, third anniversary being Gohan was, was pretty crazy. And Zamasu was also not great, but Gogeta was the one that was a real letdown. Uh, it's not all about getting the characters. Uh, getting characters is literally the reason why we play this game. You can't justify its celebrations or characters by saying it had good events in CC when the characters were borderline unreliable. Yeah, okay. Part 2 made it worse with Revive Gohan. Uh, if you're talking about the meta, then maybe you're right, but I'm saying that the third anniversary had the most events and CC amounts. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, all right, well, yeah, we had a lot of stuff. A lot of replies. <laughs> You're four because it's still going strong. A lot of replies. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And, yeah, I think that we've talked about a lot of things throughout this video. And, I, I you know, after reviewing this and kind of sitting and doing this video, I think that you can kind of make a case for, hear me out, all of them. I think that you can actually make a case for all of these anniversaries. Whether it's the character that you like being a headliner. We talked about that a lot in this video. People were saying that they were just excited. To, even towards the end, it was Gogeta and stuff. But you, the main character being the headliner. And like a common mention there, we do play the game for the characters. right? The stuff that we get on the side, like events and stuff, that matters. But only as a means to getting the characters. With the resources, right? So, and having fun with said characters when you pull them. So, yeah, you can make an argument for each of them. Now, I don't think you can make a strong argument for some of them. I do think that each of them had their peaks and their valleys, their highs and their lows. But I think that the one that is most fondly remembered is the first anniversary. I'm going to actually make an addendum here. I'm going to put for my personal rankings, year one at the top, for all the reasons I mentioned throughout the video, Year four part two. Oh my god, it pains me to do that because year four part one was so bad. But part two, where they fixed a lot of the issues with the predatory nature, I think was really good. So I'm just gonna strip off part one. If I leave part one, then this is not going second on my list, but I'm stripping that off while also maintaining the resources and CC, the crazy amount of CC. It was like 60,000. The crazy amount of CC, all that stuff from part four, uh, from year four as my second. But only part two. Again, don't get it confused. If I include the first half or the first part of part four, it's probably going as number three. And number three is year three. And year two is going at the bottom of my list. Why? Because I did not like Vegito Blue's play style. It's that simple. It's just that simple. <laughs> I can't lie to you. It's that simple. I really hated that meta. The, each of these anniversaries has had like some bad meta shifts. Maybe not the fourth anniversary. I mean, Super Super Vegito pops in and he dominates the game. Ultra Instinct is kind of, he's an annoying character, but he didn't take over the game. At least I don't feel that way. The third year anniversary characters couldn't take over the game. They wanted to, but they couldn't. Super Vegito definitely did. And Vegito Blue definitely did. So yeah, I guess. But yeah, I didn't like that second anniversary uh, meta. So. That's it, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know in the comments that you would rank the anniversaries. And I'll see you in the next one.